so the studio display has been out for a few weeks now and I have seen so many reviews, so many opinions. It's actually been really good to see all of this sort of stuff because I think it's very important to see an opinion about a product from many different perspectives. I think that's very important. I think you'd be silly just to take an opinion from one perspective because everyone has a different experience. And yeah, the overall opinion seems to be that the studio display is overpriced for, for what it is. And I do sort of agree. I wanted to quickly share the Visa mount version that I received a few days ago. There are a few differences compared to the one with the stand. The box it comes in is of course smaller as there's no stand. The Visa mount itself is a bit odd looking as it's not really part of the display. It's solid though, made from aluminium and feels very sturdy. I have it mounted to a pretty standard monitor arm I picked up from Amazon. It mounts fine and handles the weight no problem. Only odd thing though is that it does end up blocking the Apple logo. Not an issue for me though as I have my desk up against the wall anyway so I don't get to see the back of the monitor. But for those who are looking for a more sort of cleaner look, a better looking aesthetic, you may be better off actually going for the one with the stand. I also actually prefer the look of the version with the stand, but I've gone with the v mount anyway because it just makes more sense for my setup. So when you look at the market for high-end monitors, high-end displays, the studio display is definitely very expensive for what it is. The features and functionality of it for most people just aren't worth the money. There's no high refresh rate panel and there's limited connectivity. A common question I got was whether you could connect a PS5 or an Xbox to the studio display. And no, you can't really because there is no HDMI port. Again, because of the limited connectivity, you just have the one Thunderbolt port, which is used for data and power, uh, powering your MacBook or whatever. Um, so yeah, you technically can't. I'm sure someone will probably figure out a way to do it um, because you can actually connect up a PC. I've seen a few people try it with a PC. And yeah, it works completely fine with the PC. Even the webcam and the speakers work with the PC. The inability to disconnect the power cable is definitely an odd choice. I'm not sure what the thinking was behind that. Um, as you may have seen though, you can actually forcibly remove it. Now, I didn't want to do that because mine was a review unit. I didn't want to damage it, it's not mine. Um, but yeah, it's still a really odd choice and I don't understand why why you do that. I don't, I'm not really sure what, what's, the, what's the sort of decision making behind that. Most monitors, I mean, I've yet to actually come across a monitor that doesn't have a disconnect, well, uh, the ability to disconnect a power cable. Yeah, just a very odd choice. Something I also didn't realize when I received my studio display was the issues with the webcam. Now, I was completely wrong. I messed up. I actually just didn't realize, mainly because I'm not really a webcam user. I don't do many video calls. But yeah, a lot of people brought up that the webcam quality on the studio display just isn't that great. Um, for me, uh, yeah, it doesn't really make too much of a big deal, but I can completely understand why it's a big deal for other people, especially those who are on video calls every day. Now, Apple have said that there is an update coming for the webcam, which to be honest, like Apple usually do fix things like that. They're actually one of the companies that I do sort of have the trust in where they're gonna send an update out to fix that. Because yeah, as a lot of people have said, a webcam of that quality on a display that expensive, yeah, it's just not good enough and I completely get it. Um, hopefully Apple fix it very, very soon because I'm sure a lot of people are getting their studio displays right now and they want a high quality webcam. Another monitor I do have that I actually sort of like to compare it with is the EVE Spectrum, which I at the time paid $699 for. It's now gone up by $100, but I still think it's worth the money because it is absolutely brimming with features. It's a 4K 27 inch panel that can go up to 750 nits in brightness. It has a 144 Hertz refresh rate. It has two HDMI 2.1 ports, which is perfect for next-gen consoles. It has a DisplayPort 1.4 port, a USB-C port that can deliver 100 watts of power, and a built-in hub as well. I also think it looks pretty awesome with a fairly industrial but modern design, and it has very, very thin bezels. When compared to the Studio Display, the Studio Display only beats it in resolution, webcam, and speakers. Um, you could argue that the studio display has a better design. You know, it's made out of aluminum and stuff, better materials as well. But I think, of course, that's very subjective. I personally think the studio display is better looking, but they're both great looking monitors. Um, but even then, the e-spectrum beats it in pretty much every other department. That's why for most people, I would actually highly recommend going for the e-spectrum. I think as an overall monitor, 
it's so much better value for money and will meet the needs of most people. I even made a video sharing a one monitor setup with it where you can connect a Mac, a PC and a games console all at once for a pretty clean and minimal setup. So make sure to check out that video. So in the end, why did I actually end up going for the studio display? It's because I'm a big Apple fanboy. I'm kidding of course, but there's no doubt that I have a liking for Apple products. I cover a lot of them on this channel, but there is only one main reason why I went for the studio display and that is that 5K resolution. There just isn't any other choice out there when it comes to a 5K monitor other than the ugly LG 5K Ultrafine. It's difficult to explain how nice it is having a 5K resolution panel unless you do design work as it's taking a 2560 by 1440 image and scaling it perfectly. Now you can also scale a 2560 by 1440 image on a 4K monitor like the Eve Spectrum and it works well, but it's just not as sharp. To get to the same sharpness, you have to scale a 1920 by 1080 image, but then you end up losing valuable screen estate. To give you an example, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Figma scaled at 2560 by 1440 and then at 1920 by 1080. You can see how you get quite a bit more on the screen you can see a few more artboards. The other side benefit for me, other than the resolution, is the design of this thing. I personally love the design of it. The full black glass panel on the front and then the aluminum on the back. It's a pretty looking monitor. The webcam and the speakers are nice bonuses and I'm sure will be key features for some people. Another thing I see a lot of people have issues with is color calibration and matching the display to a MacBook screen. It's something that I've had issues with with lots of monitors in the past. For designers especially, this can be very frustrating. Finding another monitor that matches the color of the MacBook screen can be nearly impossible but the studio display matches it perfectly and will make those people happy. Like I said in my first video of the studio display, I feel like this really only makes sense if you're absolutely set on having a 5K resolution display. For most people, you probably don't need a 5K resolution display. And I feel like it's just such a shame that we don't see other manufacturers make other 5K resolution displays, but clearly the market is too small. It's why we haven't seen any competitors. So yeah, if you're absolutely set on 5K resolution, go with the studio display. If you're not, please don't get the studio display. It probably just isn't worth the money for you. You can get really good 4K monitors out there like the one I recommended, the E Spectrum. They're just so much cheaper and better value for money and you get a lot more features and functionality. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For those who got to the end of the video, please leave a comment with the word studio display in it. It's just nice to see who got to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.